Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 81. We are November 14th. We are at the halfway mark of November, moving towards finalizing the end of 2023. How are you feeling out there tonight, my shining entrepreneurs? This is a great time of investing in ideas that could promote positive vibration for 2024. Time to fuel that energy. Getting up early in the morning and making sure that you have your meditation, that you have your cup of coffee, tea, whatever it is that you need to refresh your juicer, uh, you know, whatever you need to do to refresh yourself for today's manifest. And don't forget that we absolutely do manifest our days uh, based upon the things we think about, the last things we think about in the mid at night before we go to sleep and what is on our minds first thing in the morning. So this is Dr. Darina Shine. You are listening to the podcast at Dr. Darina Shine TV on YouTube. And we are so grateful that you're here. We uh, have 72 people in the chat. It's a wonderful day, a wonderful time. And I just want to inform you that those who are participating in my consultation services, um, I will be starting back up December First, I will do uh, our consultations from December 1st to December 12th. After that, I have to focus primarily on my, um, my closing out of the year for my businesses. So I just want you to understand that you are valued. Your consultation services are, exp- you know, I, I bless them. You help me to continue to stay sharp at what I do. You help me to empower myself by doing the research, helping you view research opportunities and different things like that. So I really and truly thank you. Now, today I had a question and uh, Natisha, I, I really appreciate this young lady who is a big part of, you know, our community center. She is a part of her own nonprofit and she does a lot of good, great work out in the community in uh, endowment to her son. And I I just want to send a shout out to, you know, my family there and hope that all is well. I know the hardest part of getting through the year, the end of the year is all the holidays, looking at all the cheerful people, looking at, you know, mothers and daughters and mothers and sons and, and husbands and wives. And when you're single, it looks a little bit like in your face, but when you, or if you've lost a loved one, it looks like it's in your face, but I want you to pay attention to what I've learned over the years. And that is to be accepting and appreciative to seeing others happy because that was a time when you were happy. So hold on to that destiny. Hold on to the fact that we're all going to see each other again in another space, time, and form. Energy never passes. And this depreciation of, of what others would call in a lower vibration of frequency as depression or anxiety, realize that that's just on this physical realm and it's only temporary. Because if you look back, I guarantee you, you will not remember forgetting about that situation until you think of it again. I'm going to say that again. You will not remember what you're feeling now a month from now when things are going good, when something else is involved in the way you're thinking, and then you will not recognize it until you look back and say, oh, how long ago has has it been since I thought about, you know, this person? So when people say, yes, you know, it seems like I think about this person every day and the, um, this person is so like, I remember it as though it was yesterday. 
you do remember it as though it is yesterday because it actually is yesterday. It is the past. And the past can be as close to our present moment as we want it to be or as far as we want it to be. Because when you tie in the dates, that's why I do dates and uh, chronicle episode numbers. So you'll see, I can see how far I've come over the course of time that I've done these podcasts. But back to the reality, we have to look at how far we've come. And we have to give ourselves that accolade. So shout out to all those who are going through the losses of the year. You know, for those who it's fresh because it has happened this year or for those it's happened many, many years ago and we still feel that that loss. So shout out to you today. I want to thank all my veterans from the Youngstown Community Center for being a big part and a big, big advocate to the process that runs through our community from our housing association to our uh, our volunteer services to our our commitment to helping with bettering one's life through leadership I send a shout out to you and my veterans right now so if you join the Youngstown Community Center Facebook page you will definitely see all of our veterans we have given much love to, um, much honor to, because they deserve to be honored, not just on Veterans Day, but on every day when we think of them. So shout out to you. Also, shout out to my new private entity, uh, landlords. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, it's a powerful thing when we can employ and when we can build on a community that has its ups and downs. These are the entrepreneurial practices and experiences. And it's crazy because you can't share too much. You can't even give honor to individuals unless you are part of a already existing, understood memorandum of understanding in this you know, beautiful community that we live in without having some type of re- repercussion. Somebody's looking at the flaws, but many times, remember, entrepreneurs, as we're growing through this process, everyone is flawless. <laughs> because if you think about it, everyone has gone through some sort of something and, and it can either make or break you. And that's why I say I thank all the people, good, indifferent, uh, distracting, disturbing, whatever it is, I thank you for being and showing me who you were and helping me to get through that experience. Even if I even if it has to be something that is ridiculous, something that I never would have thought I would have had to do, sometimes when people show you, you automatically recognize and you give honor to that because it is something you need to know. And as growing entrepreneurs and shining entrepreneurs, hey, hey, Sierra. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have my honey tea. I have um, with peppermint. And uh, the the menthol, the tiger's balm menthol. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful time. It it absolutely is. Yes, speak those things into existence as though they are. Because you are valuable. And people have started to see you shine. And in that shining, you're going to feel that these people have turned their backs on you. A lot of times people can't sit back and watch you grow because of the fact that they didn't take the chance to do it. And a lot of times people get a little bit envious of the uh, relationship that you have with yourself, your self-confidence, your self-awareness, your ability to do your research and to Find resources that work specifically for you, not to break you down, but to build you up. 
Those are the people in which we want to have around our circle. And when people show you who they are, you know, you don't have to be uh, aggressive. You don't have to be passive aggressive. I'm learning that. I have to be more in control of how I respond to the situation that makes me either uh, grow from it or know that I need to upgrade myself. Either I'm going to already grow from it and it's going to be immediate like, oh man, you know, I was just talking to one of my clients the other day and I said, yes, I wish I had have had the hindsight before the insight. <laughs> the hindsight, seeing it happen and recognizing this is how it should be approached versus being in the moment and being emotional in the moment and then losing that opportunity to have that hindsight and say, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this and it's going to be a better result. You know, because the more we work with people, entrepreneurs, the more you work with your clients, the more you're going to find that every single one has an identity connection that is a part of your experiences from your past or something you're going to learn eventually in your future while dealing with them. So in that case, with that being said, it's a wonderful day when we can close out our evening and literally say, I kept 100% control over everything that came my way today. No matter who chooses to, you know, ignore us, because you will get some ignorance in the equation, you know, you're going <laughs> to stir up that soup, right? You're going to throw some ingredients in there, of, you know, some some ignorance in there in order for people to recognize that we see that they don't want to see us, but they see us. They see us. And also, you're going to have clients that are going to, especially in your epiphany of growth, and when you see that you're growing and you understand what's really going on, then you're going to have people come in and try to condemn what it is you're doing because they don't want you to be that confident. Like, you know, oh, remember, you have to stay humble in the game of entrepreneurship. And if you get too above the rim, then that means you're um, harder for people to get to or harder for people to connect to. And so there is no collaboration. And then the next thing you know, this is why people don't want to deal with you, don't want to deal with you. But... I'm learning something from my private landlords. I'm learning that it is a powerful tool and a technique to just be happy, even in the midst of hell. When you have hell on your hands and you are still happy, there is nothing that can take that joy away because that happiness is the true difference between, and I'm talking about people who want to go into first time home buying, uh, people who want to invest in, you know, flip houses or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm finding that it is urgently vital to recognize that as we move through this process, it's going to be amazing when we keep our power positive that is the essence of how much value we invest in us, making us priceless beings, not someone that can be labeled as, oh, I'm a million dollar woman or, oh, I'm a hundred million dollar man. It's priceless. And that's why numbers are infinite because numbers represent energy. And when you have the universe changing and shifting and teaching lessons and you have energies being brought to the planet in order to show people up for what they are doing and what they're not doing and how they're faking it to make it and how they're actually doing the right thing. Sometimes we are not perfect and yes, we are going to make mistakes. Yes, we're going to get into certain areas of our business and without the research and the knowledge, 
without someone coming, telling us we're doing something wrong and without a fine being, um, you know, possibly threatened for you to get it right, we would never get it right. So even in those instances, I'm learning under the private leadership of landlording that we have to be grateful for every single instance that comes about because it forces us to continue to do the right thing. And again, we're not going to be able to know all the laws in our jurisdiction until we have mastered the process. And for many of us, we're just going through it first year, first 10 years, but we have been involved in it for 30 years doing the entrepreneurial experiences. I had another young lady call me and I'm so super excited. You know, this woman is uh, very, very inspiring to me and I can't wait to work with her. She has a lot of good, knowledgeable things that our community can truly value and benefit from. And one of the things that she speaks about is how Helping a community is all about giving them something, something to hold on to, some type of faith, some type of measure. And when we do that, we're doing a great job. So I think this young lady is completely priceless. I think that she is the richest, you know, diamond in the field of many, many things. And I can't wait to work with you. And you know who you are. Um, and also shout out to the honorables, all my honorables within my clan of energy that I work with as far as advisors, as far as, you know, individuals who are trying to move forward and build from a nonprofit standpoint. And one thing I want you to understand because we're nonprofits do not mean that we don't make money. We absolutely do. So please don't take that as something that, oh, we're always going to give things away for free. Absolutely not. The free things are the most valuable things, letting you know that the in-kind services in which we're performing for our community is just giving back love to individuals we have met along the way. And if it's one person, I'm going to give a, a big shout out to that one person. And maybe 150 people can benefit from that one person's love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, Katira. When we give of ourselves, the more we empower others to just try it. So you woke up as an inspiring energy. You woke up as someone who said that I'm going to at least show some love. Even to the chronicles of a nonprofit, you're showing love. Why do I say you're showing love? Because you're here. You're with me. You give me the mode and the need and the desire and the strength to keep moving forward. These podcasts would be nothing without you being here. And I'm super excited that you are here. I know a lot of people don't comment on these podcasts. Uh, I believe they just come in, get a piece of knowledge. And when they need to leave out and they've gotten enough, that's it. That's what we want. We want you to understand that as an elder, learning and experiencing and going through this life from the age of zero till now, my goal is to never leave this planet until I have given all the knowledge back that I've gained from the experience of being on this planet. And I think that every elder should be doing that. Every elder should be putting themselves into that position to where their legacy means a value. You know, whether your kids listen, it doesn't matter your kids are your kids and they're there for a season. They're there to do what they do. When they do what they do, be grateful for that and move on because you have people to help with the information that some others would not rather choose. It's all a journey and it's all a, 
a, a discerning journey that if they don't get it today, they'll get it in another lifetime. If they don't get it today, Kyria, if they don't get it today, they will get it in another lifetime. So continue to keep being the greatest parent that you are under all circumstances, every circumstance that comes your way, every single circumstance, you know, you look at the area of, of tradition and you say to yourself how you try to keep things as traditional so people can go back and remember those times, those times when everything was matter of fact and you really didn't know what was going on. Uh, but one thing you knew was a big family was together, even if they were arguing, laughing, you know, fighting or screaming at each other or laughing for the moment, high and low, you knew that that traditional day of whatever, whenever, like it was every Sunday for us. And there would be a lot of conversation at that dinner table that area where most people in this generation don't understand. Most don't even have a dining room table at their home. So with that being said, the changes in times have been astronomically different. And we have to be responsible to, to show people how it was for us. Other than that, we're going to lose sight of our history. We're going to lose sight and it doesn't have to always be about the fights, the wars, the hate, the the jealousies. The it could be about the successes, about um, how you know we look at Black Friday, Black Wall Street was. You know they still give honor to you know the honoring of what they did when destroying Black Wall Street. They honor that by giving it the cheapest day of purchase because that's what we did as mom and pop stores in the black fry the black um wall street we gave our true discounts you know we're not trying to make a million dollars see and so they honor one day before they give thanks before the traditionalist gives thanks they will honor the black friday and they will say, we're giving all of these discounts, which is should have been anyway, because they hype up the price just to knock it down to save 60 to 70 percent to give it to us at that price in order to say they're giving something away. They're giving thanks to their client base only to raise the price 100 percent the day after right before Christmas. So being mindful of why these traditions are valuably in our, our history is to awaken and align and put the stories together like a pu pieces of puzzle to make a big picture. So entrepreneurs, I want you to think about that as well. Black, white, green, purple, yellow, orange, all the rainbows, the LGBTs, everybody. I want you to think about why things are set up the way that they are. You know, the universe is shifting. Like I said, it's changing just like the equinox. You know, the the world moves on a consistent rotational basis. So as it rotates, we're learning things. Things are getting caught into the wind. You know how when, when, when the wind blows, the leaves lift up when they have, when all the nutrients is out of it because it's dead, and they're lighter and fluffier. So when the wind blows, it just blows a cyclone of leaves, right? Dakota, yes, <laughs> it does. It sounds like the walking dead. Yeah, like skeletons walking. Um, the spirits are moving in order because if it was too silent at that time, the very things, the portals of the opening of the um, remnants of things in the past being removed from the planet and being portalized into the, the universe, into the planet would scare the hell out of us. That's why a lot of people, 80, you know, the people, 85% of individuals who drink alcohol during the 
holiday season is decking the halls because they know that if they were to meditate and sit still, they would see things in the supernatural world that would not be able to be seen in the realistic world, unless, of course, you're under the influence. And by that being the issue and you're under the influence, you can always say, oh, that alcohol had me thinking this or that alcohol had me thinking that. But if you dare to be strong enough in the mind to meditate and to balance yourself to be able to witness and see the things happening around you in the realistic spiritual realm, you would be able to bring a lot of physical things back to this planet just from dream states. You'll come up with ideas that is bigger than Facebook. You'll come up with ideas that are bigger than Instagram and TikTok. And being silently mindful that when you do come up with things like that, you must know what you're going to do with it before you share that information. So thank you so much, my beautiful shining entrepreneurs for being consistent, being ready, being on time and being the best you that you can be in the shoes you're rocking. I finally got that right. <laughs> being the best that you can be in the shoes that you're rocking. Cause you're, you're wearing the damn things. You're wearing the stilettos. You're wearing the the Air Jordans, you're wearing the Sears brand, you're wearing the uh, Macy's brand, you're wearing the Salvation Army brand, and you're wearing it tough. Keep it moving, and we'll see you next time.